Ghana's education sector has had checkered progress over the past several years. While school enrollment has increased across pre-tertiary levels, concerns have been raised about the quality of education in Ghana, despite government investment in the sector. So who is to blame for the poor quality of education? The government, the teachers, or both? Those are but a few of the questions we ask tonight on Hot Issues. Tonight on the program, I sit with a teacher who has dedicated 19 years of his life to the service. He says government's failure to invest in teacher welfare and in priority areas are to blame for the current state of education in the country. My guest tonight is president of the Coalition of Concerned Teachers Association, King Ali Awudu. You're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you. I'll start by asking you, whether or not you were a happy and fulfilled teacher in Ghana, and why? And happy and fulfilled, one aspect, yes, another aspect, no. Mm. A teacher is fulfilled when he impacts knowledge and then sees the students and pupils that he impacts knowledge to become renowned people in society. When you see them, you become so happy just about a week ago i was going to a particular embassy in ghana i got there there were so many people people stranded i didn't know where to pass and where to go i was there when a security man came to drag me said someone wants to see me i went and it was a student i taught way back in 2007 he offered me a VIP service at no cost. You, you become fulfilled. I left the place so happy. At that aspect, many teachers become fulfilled on that. Mm -hmm. I believe your very self, if for example, your class one teacher is still alive, should he or she sees you, you become fulfilled. Indeed. So at that aspect of it, teachers become so fulfilled. And it's, in fact, it even goes to everybody who imparts knowledge. The other aspect on how we are remunerated and paid mm -hmm. so that we can put bread and butter on the table is the biggest problem. And that's what we've been fighting for this while. My guess is that resonates with the thousands of teachers across the country. So let's talk about it. What are those things in particular that do not make the teachers happy? Basically, the teaching and learning environment, mm -hmm. some areas are a no, no, no. So there are some areas in this country, you go to the school setting and the school environment, then you are astonished as a Ghanaian if this setting is even qualified to be a classroom in the first place. And you will see a teacher there teaching without any extra remuneration. Teachers all over this country are underpaid. Currently in Ghana Education Service, the minimum requirement to enter into Ghana Education Service is first degree. So we are talking about graduate all out. As we speak, Ghana Education Service remains the largest institution in this country with the highest number of professionals, or let me say graduates. Teachers are putting in their all. Unfortunately, the energy we put in and the knowledge we are imparting to the future generations is not being remunerated today. At the end of it, a teacher gives his all and just lives as a papa. Hmm, I see. You talked about the conditions where some schools find themselves. Government has always made the point about how it is improving infrastructure in the school. Do you not see that? One biggest challenge we have in this country is when the politician target a particular segment and then try to channel all the resources to that segment. This government was key and is still key on senior high schools. Mm -hmm. So right from January 7, 2017 to date, the resources and the money that has been pumped into senior high school education 
if 20% of that had been pumped into our basic education, it would be a different story. So as we speak, not so much attention is being paid to the basic school. Mm. Even capitation grant, which is 10 CDs per child, per annum, is not being paid. It's always in arrears. So the basic schools are not supposed to charge school fees. It's FQ, Free Composing Universal Basic Education. However, the resource that the state is supposed to give to these basic schools for them to run doesn't go on time and sometimes mm. doesn't go at all. And you know how government pays, how much government pays? Government paid 10 Ghana cities per people per year. So for if, basic school for education? For basic school education. From primary one? To uh, GHS3. No, from KG. From KG? To 10 cities a 10 day? 10 cities per, it's not a per day. Per student? Per student, per people per year. That is, uh, that is what we call what a What are you supposed girl. to use that money for? That is the money the head teacher is supposed to use to run the school. That's the money the basic school teacher, uh, head teacher is supposed to use to run the school. Unfortunately, this money, as small as it is, do not even come on time. And it is always in arrears. Now, this money is calculated and it's supposed to be paid per term. But it doesn't come the way it should the come. The 10 CDs per year, per academic year, per academic it's year. supposed to be paid per term. It's calculated. So, for example, mm. if I have 100 people, that would be 1,000 CDs. That 1,000 CDs is supposed to be divided and paid per term mm -hmm. so that it will be used for the basic administration of the school. The money is just woefully inadequate. At the right. same so, so, time, so that also tells me, and, and I'll have you continue, that also tells me that uh, they, the higher the student population, the more money you would the get more money you get. The Yes, the more money you get. But does that mass, in, in, on, in, on the ground, does that mass work in, in managing the schools? So for us, yes, to a larger extent. For example, if you have, let's say, 500 pupils, and you are supposed to organize end of term exams. Mm -hmm. And you are supposed to print the papers. You are printing for a 500 student. If I have 100, I'm printing for 100. Remember, per the FQ, the free busy school, the parents are not supposed to pay anything. Mm -hmm. The state is supposed to bear the total cost. But the challenge we have here is that government is not pumping in so much money as it is being pumped into the senior high school. When you come to the senior high school, for example, the feeding that is given to them alone surpasses the money. The entire that, budget. Uh, surpasses the entire money that is uh, supposed to be paid to pupils in busy schools per annum. So if you come to the senior high school, what I mean is that the amount of money government spends on feeding and other perishables per student per day is just like the money government spends per people per year in the busy schools. Recently, you heard about the government wish to establish smart senior high schools mm -hmm. and the procurement of some 1.3 million tablets at the cost of about 320 million US dollars uh -huh. for senior high senior school high students. That's a lot of money. And there's nothing wrong with that. The schools must be equipped. Mm. But in every building, the foundation is key. If the people is not well brought up at the KG, not well brought up at the primary, not well brought up at the senior high school, at the junior high school, they will get to the senior high school deficient indeed just just hold your brakes there let's go back to those 10 cities per annum per student right these monies are given to you um as school heads to manage the to school. manage the school per year fantastic what are the logistics that these monies go to purchase tell me what those are the money is supposed to run end of term exams mm -hmm. supposed to buy stationaries maybe a4 sheets Maybe if you have printers, cartridges, those things, you're supposed to buy toiletries, 
I mean, it's supposed to buy uh, cleaning agents. Well, are, are the students not given prospectus anymore? We don't do that no, anymore? No, that's the busy school. Yeah, at the, at the basic school. At the busy level. school. At the busy school, they're not supposed to provide that. Anything at all. Anything at all. Mm. At the senior high school, some of those things are put in prospectus. And even that, the Ghana Education Service has now streamlined the prospectus to avoid senior high school head teachers overcharging and all that. But at the busy school, in fact, some of the busy schools, the locations in which they are, even if you ask a parent to bring one seat, they won't get it for you. They won't get it for you. Now, when you come to the busy school, we have the school feeding program. Uh -huh. But the school feeding program is not given to all basic schools. It is some selected busy schools. There really? are some deprived busy schools that have been written to the gender ministry wanting to be included in the school feeding program but have not yet gotten So hang on, why, but, I, I mean, this initiative is supposed to cover all basic schools? No, right from the time it was introduced, from the time of President Kufour, it has never covered all basic schools. schools. It is supposed to cover basic schools that are actually deprived. But there are so many basic schools that are seriously deprived and are currently not on the school feeding program. But when you come to the senior high schools, because of the political will, every single senior high school, the borders are fed three times for free. And the day students are fed once, one hot meal per day. So when you go to the senior high school, every single senior high school, if you are a day student, you'll be fed lunch. If you are a border, you'll be fed breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But when you come to the busy school, where the pupils are young, they are little. That cannot stand hunger. When they are left to their own, they cannot even buy anything for their own. Rather, not every busy school is covered, but every senior high school is covered. And, and what you're also saying is the fact that um, this covers some busy schools. But the very deprived ones is not covering. I, I don't understand that. Why is it the very deprived ones are not covered under the initiative? The, uh, this policy is not under the Ministry of Education. It's under the uh -huh. Ministry of Gender and Social Protection. I don't know the criteria they used to select. But during the time of President Kufour, when it was first introduced, the idea is that it will be rolled out to even cover all busy schools. Unfortunately, that has not been done up to today. You tell me you don't know why, but who, whose job is it to find out why? For us, as union leaders, almost all the busy schools should have been hooked on to the school feeding program by now. I, the policy I, I, for I, which I, I it, understand, was, I understand it was that. initiated. With. I understand that. If government is not sending the school feeding program to certain schools, and as you describe them, deprived schools. Um, whose job is it to tell government that these schools and these pupils here need a school feeding program? Yes, as union leaders, we make all the advocacy. But as unions, we work with the labor laws. And the labor laws are such that the students or the pupils are not our members. I, I agree. Our members are the teachers. So for example, if the school feeding program is not being provided for certain schools that we believe should have it, we cannot even declare an action on that. Issues that directly affect the teachers, we fight for. The others, we do strong advocacy to the necessary officers that are involved. But as I said earlier... No, so, so I understand, right? I understand that. Uh, the head teachers who are supposed to be uh, in charge of administration of these schools, shouldn't they be telling government... There, 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 there's a challenge there. Okay. You see, if you are the head teacher of a school, you are part of the general GES management. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the head teachers fear to make certain announcements, to come to the open. For example, no head teacher can come and sit here just and then make this discussion with you. He will leave here and go and his dismissal letter will be waiting for him. So the head teachers cannot come out and then make the necessary noise that they are supposed to make or call on government to do A, B, C, D because they also want their job. It is we that will continue to make that advocacy. And what we are telling government is that the budget that is being spent 
on senior high school. Even if 20% is given to mm. basic school infrastructure, we will have a different basic school in this country. I see. Let's talk about how the condition or the state of our basic schools complicates your work as teachers. Talk to us about that. Indeed, a teacher needs a lot of tools in order to be able to carry out the job that you are supposed to carry out. There are some schools in this country, you will go and there is only one teacher handling from class one to GHS3 because no teacher even wants to go there. Last year, a member of my union died crossing the Volta Lake to go and teach on an island community. He died just like that. And the Employer and Education Service, our ministry, Ministry of Education, there's no any form of insurance, there's no any form of extra compensation that will be given to his family or wife and kids that he's left behind. So nobody wants to even go to those rural communities in the first place. GES will always push teachers there. But when they get there, in a matter of a year or two, they will find their way out. Because I cannot go and live in a place where there's no electricity, there is no internet, transport is a problem, no proper accommodation, nothing. And then I'll be paid the same salary and remuneration as somebody teaching in the heart of Accra. Mm. I'll also find a way and work out. But when you come to our environment, our biggest problem is teaching and learning materials. The teaching and learning materials to a large extent are not available. You heard of the Common Core curriculum that was introduced. The current JHS 3 will be the first batch of pupils that will be coming out on the Common Core curriculum. Unfortunately, we've been crying for textbooks for the Common Core curriculum and we've still not had it. So teachers still are teaching out of the resource packs that not even all the classes were given. They are teaching from their own research. They do from other books and on the internet to teach the kids. Mm. You go to a school and a teacher is teaching ICT and there is no ICT lab. A teacher is teaching titration in chemistry and he's just telling the students on the blackboard how they will pour acid into, into base and when it gets to this point, color will change abstract mm. teaching. Right, but, but you know, we, we must also admit that government is taking a keen interest in STEM education and we're seeing some labs lab Senior built. high school. Again, senior high school. Again, senior high school. The current minister have that vision of transforming senior high school. We don't have a problem with that. In fact, the STEM schools that are being built around, if you get the opportunity to go and view any of them, mm -hmm. they are fantastic edifice with well-stocked resources and all that. You heard of Ifia could be because of the resources given them, teachers and pupils were able to put things together, make some aeroplane that mm -hmm. flew into the sky and all that. But the same cannot be said about our busy school, and that is our biggest problem. You go to many busy schools in the hinterlands of this country, and children are still lying down on the floor to write. Student pupils are still sitting down on blocks. I mean, there is absolutely nothing. The infrastructure is such that if there is rain, school must close. Mm -hmm. They will come to school and you will be in the classroom and reptiles, snakes will be coming around and all that. You can be on the compound and you see the herdsmen passing through the compound with their head of cattle, disrupting activities and all. And it is scattered all over. It is as a result of this that we are asking for deprived area allowance. Indeed. And I want us to discuss some of those uh, demands you're making on government when we come back. We'll also talk about that your 13-page document uh, that you made available yes, to, the yeah, to the political party, parties, political parties to, the political to parties. include in their yes, manifestos. Sure. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. Today, our discussions bother on the current state of work for our teachers, the conditions of service that they have, and how it makes your jobs better or worse. Uh, in the studio with me is Co Coalition of Concerned Teachers, Ghana President King Ali uh, do Thank you so much for your patience. We know the Thursday you had a meeting with government uh, to discuss some of your demands after calling off uh, uh, a couple, uh, strike action yeah. that, that lasted a couple of weeks. Uh, talk to us about how this meeting went. 
Uh, thank you very much. So we declared an action on 20th of March uh, this year as a result of uh, government failure to come to a negotiation table for us to complete negotiation of our conditions of service. The rules we set for ourselves when we began a negotiation was that by April 29, 2024, we should have finished with everything. But April 29th came and government was not even making itself available for the negotiations to continue. Uh -huh. So the unions, we wrote a letter to the parties involved, Fair Wages, Ministry of Education, Gather Education Service, and we served Labor Commission. That today, 29th is the deadline. We are giving 14 days more ultimatum. If government doesn't come to the table, the education sector in this country may be disturbed. Uh -huh. 14th of March came and we still did not hear anything from the relevant stakeholders. We gave an additional one week, still we couldn't hear anything. So on the 20th, we declared a strike. As usual, Labor Commission wrote to declare the strike illegal. That one is not surprising. That is how it's always been. Then we were later invited to the Labor uh -huh. Commission. Uh, that was on 25th March. On 25th March, we went, and uh, about nine attempts were presented. About three of them are non-financial, so Labor Commission was able to deal with it there. Uh, the three that Labor Commission dealt with them were scheme of service. Uh -huh. The Ghana Education Service is the largest government agency in this country. Uh -huh. The Ghana Education Service alone employs about 60% of all government workers in this country. 60% of all public sector workers are in the Ghana Education Service. Unfortunately, the largest agency in Ghana Education Service does not have a scheme of service. It's mind-boggling. Uh. So how somebody becomes a headmaster, somebody is appointed a teacher, somebody becomes a director general, somebody mm. becomes a regional director, whatever, it's not documented in any book. So how, how have those appointments been made over the years? Oh, it's been done by people's desire to appoint people. Yes. So currently, for example, if you are the head of department in a senior high school, it is the headmaster that appoints you. There's no any criteria for the appointment. So he appoints whom so he wish and disappoints whom so he wish. But the, the entity should have a scheme of service. All public sectors have scheme of service mm -hmm. in which the organizations, ranking, promotion system, everything is documented. So that one, Labor Commission made a ruling that by the end of April this year, the Ghana Education Service to make a draft copy available to the unions for review. Uh -huh. And then uh, teachers were taking, some monies were taken from teachers in 2020 for government to top up for them to be provided with laptops. Uh, about 260,000 teachers have received their laptop, but there's still quite a number of teachers that have not yet received their laptop. That one to Labor Commission give up to the end of June. How, how many people now are left to receive their laptops? Uh, Approximately about 100,000 teachers. 100,000 teachers, yes. I see. Yeah. And, and all of them paid how much? 509 to, Ghana cities. To get the laptop, because to government the laptop. was taking 70%. Government was taking 70% of the cost. I see. Did government give any reasons why the delay? Uh, well, the education minister himself was there and assured the Labor Commission that by the end of June, everybody will get his laptop. But did they explain why it they had didn't taken give so long? any detailed reasons? The teachers didn't ask why. All that we wanted was a commitment. Mm. Because if you come and tell me these are the reasons why you've not supplied a laptop, that is not actually what we want to hear. Mm. Because for the teacher, he has paid the money and the laptop must be supplied. Mm. If I want to listen to the reason why you have not supplied it, it means that I am ready to listen to those challenges and possibly back down as well. Mm -hmm. But the teacher will not back down because he has a skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Because they have a skin in the game of Africa and nine Ghana cities, all they want is a laptop. I see. But, but what kind of a laptop are you going to get with 509 cities? What, what, what did they get? As before? I said, government topped up. So I the, know, because the, the ratio is a 70-30. Yeah, so the right? cost, the total cost was 1,550. Mm -hmm. That's the total cost, 1,550. Of which the teacher paid, let me say, 500 Ghana cities out of it. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, there is a customized laptop named TM1, Teachers Meet 1. And you know, economies of skill, the numbers are large. 
So we got it done. I see. But uh, while we are on the issue of laptop, let's talk about the, uh, you know, the recent SM1 uh, tablets. That like uh, like uh, I'm, I was talking about the grievances, Some if I can your... conclude, I can uh, conclude go, on that. Sure, go so ahead. the Labor Commission uh, also uh, made a, a ruling, you know, current, uh, recently there are some teachers whose salaries were blocked by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Uh -huh. In fact, the employer itself didn't know that the Office of the Special Prosecutor was even taking some exercise in its sector. All that we heard was that some teachers, especially in the northern part of this country, have had their salaries blocked. The salary For how long? Uh, it started from January this year. Okay. The salary was not blocked at the uh, controller level where the payment is made. So controller actually paid the money. Mm -hmm. The money hit the teacher's account. They got alert. They went to the bank and their bankers told them that they have received directives from the Office of the Special Prosecutor to put embargo on their account. Mm -hmm. So that went to the Labor Commission rule that within one month, that by the end of this month, April, the Grand Education Service should resolve that issue. And I can say it here confidently that it's been resolved and the teachers that are involved, the numbers have reduced mm. drastically. The other six issues that could not be, we couldn't reach agreement at the Labor Commission are those that we are on the negotiation table with. We call it continual professional development allowance, uh -huh. the private area allowance, utility subsidy allowance, teaching or assessment allowance, we have rent allowance, and we have transport or commuting allowance. These six is what is on the table for negotiation of which we met today. All right, we'll talk about the six, but uh, Thursday, do, yeah. do, do, do we know why the OSP was looking into the salaries of these seizures? We do not know anything about it because the employer itself was not given any official notice by the Office of the Special Prosecutor that it is doing some kind, it, it is it's going to do some kind of exercise. It was after the issues had come out mm -hmm. that we got to know that the, they go to, let me say, district and circuit. So, junior high school A, Amma teach there. So, they went to junior high school A, Amma is no longer there. Amma has been transferred to junior high school mm -hmm. B, but Amma's salary is still being validated at junior high school A, but Amma is not there. So, if they take the payroll of junior high school A and Amma's is being validated here, but she doesn't teach here, then they declare that the person is ghost. If they had consulted their employer, that wouldn't happen. Because in the Ghana Education Service, if you are transferred from one locality to the other, mm -hmm. it can take several months before the change of management unit happens. You talked about the, NLC, the National Labor Commission and the position it takes all the time. But the truth of the matter is, is they are right to call your strike illegal, isn't it? Or you think they are just there the, for the, the government? They, they are right in, in, in which sense? We have a National Labor Commission that to us appears to be working so assiduously when labor unions declare a strike. But a Labor Commission is not just there for that. They are just there, first of all, to make sure that Labor agitation and industrial unrest doesn't even happen in the first place. And they are there to put government on its toes and say that this is what the people are demanding for. Go negotiate with them. When we reach conclusion, they are supposed to serve as arbitrators and say that no, this is valid and the people must get it. And that is what they have been doing, calling well, you uh, to the, the table The Labor to Commission negotiate. itself sometimes make rulings and it's no experience. Recently, they make ruling on... Uh, Sonu Asogri, which is even a private entity, and it was not even respected. So what we are saying is that teachers have gone through a hell in this country, and we have gotten to the point where the kind of heat the teachers out there are giving to we leaders, it is such that this time we are not ready to relent on anything. And the allowances we are asking for, we must get it in one way or the other. If we won't get it as rent allowance, we must get it in another form. If we won't uh -huh. get it as transport allowance, we must get it in another form. If we won't get it as utility subsidy, we must get it in another form, no matter what. This time, I'm not ready to back down. Unfortunately, uh, our challenge and the sad and the sorrow in our hearts is the pupils and students that are always on the side of receiving the blue. It has never been our intention to sit home and allow the pupils and the students 
not to have the knowledge that is supposed to be imparted to them. It is not any teacher's will to deliberately do that. So when you go on strike and it affects lessons, do you make up for it? Oh, we make up all the time. Let me give you a very big example. So are we going to see an extension of the term? Oh, uh, uh, the WASI date and the BEC date are set. So the term may not be extended, but we may extend the teaching time. During the time of COVID, for example, when teachers start home for about 10 months, when we came, we ourselves, the three of us that are doing this, five myself, Musi and Kabunu, we went to the then director general, sat down with him and said that, let us look at how we can do extra teaching to cover mm. up as no extra pay. Th that was extenuating circumstances. Oh. So you, we, you we, didn't go on strike then? No, we didn't go on strike. Yes. We were touched with the fact that we've sat... You were touched, but in this case, you are not touched. Uh, in, the, this, in this case, you are asking government, give me what is due yes, me or I'll put yes, down my tools. Yes, the teachers, the teachers are really suffering. I believe you may know we'll one or two teachers, on. especially we we'll, men that are teachers. Uh, sometimes... When they are even going to look for women for marriage, it becomes difficult. Really? Uh, yes. How the, so? Ah, the in-law will look at you and tell you that, ah, you, you are a teacher. Are you sure you can take care of my daughter? Do teachers in Ghana earn up to 3,000 cities? Yes. At all, I mean, at all levels? Not at all levels, depending on your rank mm. and how long you've been in the service. I have been in the service since 2005. So how many years are we talking about? 19 years. Mm -hmm. And for ninth, and with a second degree, for being in the service for 19 years and with a second degree, I earn 4,066 cities. 19 years. 19 years. Yes. You mean this 2024? Yes. You earn 4,666. 4,066. 4, oh, 4,066. Yes. 4,066. That is my net, mm -hmm. not the gross. Uh, the gross is bigger than the 4,000, but after the deductions, tax, mm -hmm. and all, the, that's what I take home. And that is me that I've taught for 19 years on the rank of assistant director one. On the rank of assistant director one. So you can zero in to the teacher that have just been what? Recruited. You can zero in. Mm -hmm. So if you ask, do some teachers take up to 4,000 years? Even the director general is a teacher. He's mm -hmm. the chief teacher. Mm -hmm. And director general earns more than 3,000. He earns more than the 4,000 I earn. Okay. You get it. Mm -hmm. But that is to the top of the few that have been in the service for long and are on a certain high ranks. But the vast majority of teachers are between senior superintendent to principal superintendent. Those who are still you know, on the ground oh, yes. doing the job. Yes. Majority of teachers are in that rank. And they, don't, uh, they will not take up to the 3,000. I see. Yes. I see. But there are teachers that take beyond 3,000. Wow. Like myself. I mean, how... how <laughs> it's difficult to ask the so question. So the question is, how do they survive? Yes. Uh, how, how do, do you they do survive? That? that is why we are saying that we are not asking for increase in the base pay. Because you cannot increase the base pay for teachers alone. It must go in tandem for all public sector workers. So what we are asking for is that, give us some specific allowances. Mm -hmm. If government thinks that we asking for rent allowance, utility subsidy, utility subsidy, electricity, water, and then transport allowance, when they give it to us, it may open a floodgate or something. They should let us sit down rack our brains and look for allowance that will be sector specific. Mm. The reason why we are asking for this trade is that this trade takes a chunk of the teacher's mega money. Rent, utility, electricity and water, and then transport. This trade can take more than 50% or more of the teacher's uh, salary. So if you are able to get some allowance from these areas, mm -hmm. and the teacher will be cushioned. Let me put on record that teachers, despite all these difficulties, Teachers are still open-hearted and ready to give up their best to the future leaders in this country. So, so King, again, I just want to take us a, a bit back. Um, so it means that until the 23% increase this year, your salary was not even up was to not, four, was not up to that. was not up to yes. 4,000. In fact, the salary has gotten to 4,000 for the past two years. In 2023, mm -hmm. we got an increment of 30%. Mm -hmm. And then this year, we got 23%. Yes. In July, additional 2% will, will be added. Yes. So if you take those things out and take your mind by 2022, 
You can just do the calculation. No, I was taking just about 2,000 and 2,000 to about 2,500 mm. or something. Let's look quickly at the 13-page document uh, yeah, you yeah. provided. Is this the first one you are making available? This is the very first one. Right. And so here's my question on that. Uh, governments have come, governments have, have gone. The teachers have now found it necessary to present a contribution to their manifestos because according to you, there haven't been consultations so far. Is that also a sign that government after government have failed to tackle perhaps uh, the most critical issues to teachers? Because really, there wasn't any consultation with you. Would that be the conclusion you draw? Exactly so. You see, in this country, there is no sector that it's used for politics more than the education sector. The reason is that we have over 400,000 employees in the education sector. And every politician knows that he is not dealing with only the 400,000 people, but he's equally dealing with the people the 400,000 teachers are imparting knowledge to. Because when a teacher stands before a class of, say, 50 in a senior high school, he has the power to speak to them and skew their mind towards a political angle, towards a certain political angle. Yeah. So we've realized that over the years, they use the education sector for a lot of politicking. So they will sit in their own closet and make certain promises and then come and put it out there. But that is not what we need. Mm -hmm. So this time, and it is... What we did is novel in this country. This is the first time a group of workers have written their own manifesto mm -hmm. and presented it to the political parties to incorporate it into their general manifesto. So this time we sat down as teacher unions and then thought deeply in what has been going on, mm -hmm. thinking outside the box, and we put for, to, uh, together a 13-page document Indeed. containing so many things that we are asking the political parties to imbibe. Indeed. As I speak to you, uh, the, nation, the new patriotic party have reached out to us, mm. and they will meet us tomorrow, Monday. To, Over your document? Yes. Mm. Yeah, they've reached out to us, and they are meeting us on it uh, tomorrow, Monday. Uh, I see. So, so, Very well. so, so I want us to look at some of the things that you have called for in uh, this document. One of those is first language as the medium of yes, instruction. L1. And this first language you're referring to, the, the language... L1. The language of, of, of you know, the, the local dialect, yeah, local of, dialect. Of, of the child yes. and where they come from, yes. or even within the community. Within where, not necessarily uh, where they come from. Don't we already have that? We have that, but it is not being implemented. It is not being implemented because of the teacher deployment. Mm. GES doesn't have a challenge with teacher recruitment, but the challenge is the teacher deployment. So if somebody... It's a gun, and the person have gone to college and have done gun, for example. You know, when you go to college, you don't do just one thing. So mm -hmm. if somebody has done gun, the person may have done English in addition or social studies in addition. So somebody is a gun, the person have done gun, and then you post the person to Yendi mm -hmm. to go and teach, for example, English. That person cannot speak Dagbani. Mm -hmm. So by posting that person to Yendi, to go and teach, yeah. the issue of the L1 is lost uh -huh. because the teacher himself cannot express himself in that language. So the only thing he can do is to speak English to the people. And the vice versa is also true. So what we are saying is that GES should take keen interest in teacher uh -huh. deployment. And using so that, that is why that policy failed, yes. because the deployment was not... The deployment not, is the problem. Uh, you know, commensurate with the needs, the language needs of the, of the communities of the community. where the teachers were sent. And this is scientifically researched, mm. that if you teach a child in the language he or she understands, mm -hmm. from KG up to primary three, the child becomes better. Mm. There are people that in their homes, they speak English with their children. Do this study yourself. You will realize that the home, not an English home, mm -hmm. a Ghanaian home, mm -hmm. where they speak English to the child, the child ages before they become fluent and eloquent. But the child, 
who is born in Asante Mampo, and everybody speak chi to the child, mm. you can realize that even at two years, if that child is speaking the chi and expressing him or herself, you'll be marveled. So the L1 should be taken serious mm. if we are to move forward. And we should stop this thing of thinking that speaking good English means that you are a good student or you are intelligent. And that in this country, we measure people's intelligence by the ability to speak someone's language. Indeed. When we come back, a bit more on that 13-page document, we would also want to talk about the quality of teachers and uh, you know, the kind of knowledge that they are yeah, transferring yeah. to our children in the public schools. And then we'll talk teacher migration. Don't go away. Many thanks for staying with us here on Hot Issues. Tonight, my guest is King Ali Awudu. He's president of the Coalition of Concerned Teachers Ghana. We've been talking all, t all things teacher unions. He's still here with me in the studio. Again, thank you so much. I was saying we'll look a bit more at the document that you have provided to the political parties, on the back of which you say you are meeting the uh, NPP on Monday to yeah. discuss. Uh, one of the other things that you have called for is in-service training for practicing teachers. You don't have now that right now. In our current conditions of service, the uh -huh. in-service training is there. Uh -huh. But it is not done to the level we want it to be done. Currently, we have something we call PLC. Uh, which is being done in our schools, uh, professional learning communities. Okay. And it's supposed to be done on Wednesdays. So on Wednesdays, we will gather. As teachers? As teachers. So, for example, I teach biology. So all the biology teachers will gather, and then we do knowledge sharing. Mm. Where does that happen? I have never had any teacher group meeting yes, to discuss. Yes, it, it, it is a new thing that has been introduced. Right. Currently, it's there. The schools are doing it. Okay. When did this start? Uh, and it's last year. It, it, last year. Yes. Okay. Uh, PLC has been there, but... It, 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 it wasn't practiced. Yes. It, it, I mean, it came into a limelight and we started practicing it more from last year. Mm. Now, what we want proper in-service is for people from academia to come and take the teachers through certain new things. Okay. So, for example, uh, English is a language and it is dynamic. Things are changing here and there. Formerly, where you thought we put a full stop, now they will tell you it's a comma. So, you bring somebody from academia, the universities, mm -hmm. a professor in the field gather the English teachers, take them through training. Because most of the time, when a teacher goes to college, mm -hmm. now the colleges are awarding degree, and then they get their first degree, and they are posted to the schools to go and teach. There are some of the teachers that will not go for any form of upgrading of themselves. The reason is that if he's going for upgrading of him or herself, it's about money. And when he looks at his pocket, how much he's paid, and the responsibilities on Doesn't him. Doesn't government take care of that as a public sector worker? No, no, no. Like, if, if, if for example, you come from a training college, you are holding a diploma, and then you want to go and do degree, there is something we call steady leave with pay. Uh -huh. But government will tell you because of financial constraints, they are unable to offer everybody that is requesting it. I so see. we can have about 50,000 people requesting for steady leave with pay, and government may grant just about 1,000. How long has the situation been like that? Oh, it's been that since. Okay. Since. So now what government is even doing is that they scale it down. They, they, they isolate some subjects mm. that if you are going on steady leave in this area, mm. uh, we'll select some of you and give you steady Maybe leave. Maybe those are the subjects of importance to every, every the subject, current curriculum. Every subject is important. For example, if you tell me that you will give steady leave for integrated science, but you will not give steady leave for history. What you are telling me is that we should become scientific, but we should lose focus of where we came from, uh -huh. our history. And it is our history that we need to build on and move forward as a society. While we're on the issue of training, let's wrap it up on the quality of teachers. Uh, what's your assessment of the quality of teachers we've had over the years now? In fact, you need to do this assessment in relation to other African countries and Europe and America. You realize that the quality of teachers Ghana produces is top-notch. Mm. 
It is. I'm telling you, look, the advanced countries in this world that speak English, mm. United States, United Kingdom, Australia, when they open their portals for teachers, Ghanaian teachers are always one of the first that are considered. And the research well, is there. Perhaps because Ghanaian teachers know how to pass exams. But I'm talking about, you know, the quality of passing on knowledge yes. to young people. Yes. Why do you think that even in that sphere, Ghanaian teachers are top-notch? What is giving you Ghanian that Ghanaian teachers are top-notch mm. because if you are looking at the students, what they can do and what they cannot do, you will have to look at the gadget available to the teacher at the time he was teaching. Mm -hmm. The professor that handles the science and math quiz, she was interviewed and she said that the Ghanaian students are so brilliant and that in a there was one particular year that the school that won the science and math quiz, they were taken to uh, a foreign country, I think Singapore or so. And then when they went with their counterparts on the theory on paper, they did fantastic, topping everybody. But when it got to the stage where they were put into the uh, uh, science labs mm. and the uh, STEM labs, where they were supposed to identify gadgets and then work with them, they were unable to do it. And that is what the fault of the Ghanaian teacher. Because the Ghanaian teacher taught science in the abstract. He wasn't giving the gadget. You saw the teacher who drew a whole computer on the board. Mm -hmm. He drew the whole computer interface. He drew it with chalk on the chalkboard, telling the students that this is this, this is that, the computer interface. Such a student, when you go to write exams, theoretically he will pass. But on the day the computer is brought before the child and he is asked to open a Word document, the teacher could have opened a Word document on a blackboard so that the student can do it. Uh, in that document, you ask government to... Uh, or whichever government succeeds this one to review the free senior high yes, school yes. program. Uh, why is that necessary? What are you asking to be reviewed? You know, the free senior high school is a fantastic idea. To me, I see it as one of the best interventions that has happened under this government. But if you are ruling a policy, mm -hmm. and you are ruling a policy for Ghanaians, then you must be fair to Ghanaians. The free SHS in its current form is even discriminatory. For example, my ward and your ward all want to go to, for example, Achimota School. Mm -hmm. They all want to go to boarding house. They all want to go to the boarding house. My ward gets the boarding, but your ward doesn't get the boarding on the excuse that there is no space. You understand? then government spends about five times the money he will spend on those in the boarding house to those he spent on the day school, day students. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we are all children of taxpayers. Almost every student wants to be in a boarding house, but a group have not been given the boarding status because there is not enough space. Mm -hmm. And then we are spending more money on those in the boarding school and those that are day that the SHS is supposed to be free, at the end of the mm. day, will have to take money every single day from their parent to commute themselves in and out of school. Whereas the child of another taxpayer is in school and the parents are not paying T and T mm. and the child is being fed three times a day. So what we are saying is that if that is the case, the burden mm -hmm. should be made payable. So it's free. But if you want your ward to stay in the boarding house, then the feeding fee must be paid. And all the challenges we are having in the senior high school is because of the feeding. Okay. Buffer stock is unable to send food on time. You will go to the schools and realize that the students are being fed with one sided meal for several days. The quality of the food is decreasing by the day. Why should government? worry itself with that burden. And we also know that on record, um, this free, free senior high school is not free at all. And that's only because your members are charging illegal fees across some secondary schools. That was why recently some secondary schools were sanctioned. Yeah, uh, but why, 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 why were they were doing sanctioned. that? It, I mean, they were scapegoated. 
but it, it's a large practice across the secondary schools but, in the uh, country. Uh, I mean, why? When a rule has been made uh -huh. that don't do A, the fact that you are doing A does not mean the rule is not there. The rule is there. So what the Ghana Education Service needs to do is to set its tentacles wide and then bring the corporate to book because it's a human institution. Remember, we've moved from fee-paying senior high school to free. So, At uh, the so, time so that why were your members uni unilaterally taking the decision to charge certain fees? We don't know why, because the head, the head teachers do not consult the unions mm. before they do that. They do that. In fact, some of the head teachers were even charging petrol for headmaster's car. I mean, this is uncalled for. And we will not support that in any way. Mm. So, in the first place, the policy is free. Imagine a child from that poor home that has been able to get admission to senior high school. And after you have gotten that admission, remember that for the prospectors, the parents still have to buy it. Mm -hmm. And now things are expensive. Parents spend 2000 3000 4000 5000 sometimes more mm -hmm. buying the prospectors for their walls. Only for the parent to bring the wall to the school, for the head teacher to say that, I am also charging this amount. If you are not able to pay, take your word home. Well, that is inhumane. Mm -hmm. And if you're a headmaster and you engage in that kind of act, and then you are found wanting... You go and tell your own story. I see. However, we should be able to get to the stage when the review is done uh -huh. to look at how best parents can help fund the free senior high school. There are parents in this country that paid thousands per term for their awards in basic school preparatory. Uh -huh. Some even paid dollars, fees for their basic school in international schools, for their basic uh, for mm -hmm. their children in basic school, international schools. Then all of a sudden, such a parent that was paying so much, sometimes even in dollars, for the fees of the world in basic school, the same world comes to senior high school and now we say that it is free. We have those that can pay and are willing to help. Mm. And we have those that cannot pay. So there should be a policy. I mean, government can allow that fine. If you are a parent and you are sending your word to school and you think that you have some 100 cities, you have some 200 cities you want to use to help the school pay, let's write your name in a logbook, let's issue you with a receipt mm. and all that. Those that cannot pay should not be forced and their words should not be Bill, sent away. Like, like I said, we are powering through our last few topics. I want us to look at the immigration of teachers from this country. As a lot of numbers have been bandied about. How many of you have left so far? Uh, currently, per the budget that was read 2017, that was when it started coming out, we got to know that not less than 7,000 leaves. Mm -hmm. But as of last year, we got to know that not less than 10,000 leaves. And they live mainly to the UK, the United States, and Australia. And it's because of all these factors yes. that Yes, and they live have... to go and teach. Uh -huh. They move directly to the classroom. So uh, we have a licensing system organized by the National Teaching Council here which is equivalent to the licensing system of the UK. So there's a, some process you go to, the issue you some documents. They fair declare vacancies, you apply, when they pick you, they give you documents and all that. When they go straight into those classrooms to go and teach, that is why I keep saying that the Ghanaian teacher is well trained. Is there circumstances in this country that is preventing the Ghanaian teacher to give up his best? Are more still going? And yes, more will go. If the opportunity is there, all of them will go. Me, I will go. You plan to? Uh, if I get an opportunity, I'll go. The former president uh, and the flag bearer of the NDC had talked about uh, these licensure exams for, for teachers. Um, let's look at it in two ways. As it is now, is it helping you as teachers? It is helping. And so um, taking it away, could it cause any problems? I don't think the former president, your mama, said he's taking it away. Mm. Uh, if what I'm thinking is right... Their problem is the level at which the Lazenger exam is written. Mm -hmm. Currently, the NTC is doing it like the way all other professional bodies does it. Mm -hmm. You finish your academic qualification before you come and write the professional exam. But what the NDC is saying is that the, Lanz the, the teacher Lazenger exam should be written while the teacher is still in the college. 
Right. So you don't finish and come and write exams. So you don't finish right. so, to come so, and so, write. So, so what, I'm, what I'm asking is that uh, proposed process by the NDC's flag bearer, um, how, how does this sit with teachers? Would it be helpful to you? Is that the best way to go? Whichever way you look at it, the license exam will be written. Mm -hmm. And the license exam by law is conducted by National Teaching Council. They are supposed to superintend it. The difficulty that would be for National Teaching Council is how they can superintend over the exams in all the about 48 colleges of education in all our universities. Currently, all the universities are doing education, including even Lego. Lego, mm -hmm. Lego is not training teachers. They are all, even KNUST is not training teachers. I see. So now all the universities are training. Formerly, it used to be Cape Coast and Winneba. Now all the universities are doing all the private universities, Valley View, uh, Presby, mm. they are all doing it. Now, if they are all writing a licensure exam, because it is the same exam, it must be written at the same time, and the National Teaching Council must supervise it from everywhere, it is going to be quite difficult. Mm. But for us here, a teacher must write a licensure exam to, to be certified mm. to become a teacher. And since the licensure exam was introduced, Teachers have really been saved. And indeed, they are not teachers. Those that write a licensure exam are would be teachers. teachers. You understand? Because you have to write a licensure exam, pass it before you can even be recruited by the Ghana Education Service to become a teacher. So those that went to write a licensure exam and failed, and people are saying their teachers are free, they are not teachers. It's just like lawyers. Before they enter Makola, they write mm. some exam. Mm -hmm. If they, those that fail, they are not lawyers. Because you have, to, you have to go through Makola for two years before you are called to the bar. Mm. So those that fail and their exam, let's put on record that, are not teachers. They want to be teachers. Yeah. And going through the process to become teachers, they couldn't make it. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> King Ali Awudu is president of the Coalition of Concerned Teachers Ghana. We've been talking about the welfare of teachers. We've looked at the quality of the teaching and learning process at our schools at all levels, uh, pre-tertiary levels uh, uh, specifically. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hot Issues. We hope to see you same time here for another enthralling conversation. I'm Kemeni Amano. Bye-bye.